Greetings, I am Dr. S. Monish Balaji. Today, we will be talking about Kisselbach's plexus. So, what is Kisselbach's plexus? It is an integral anastomosis of 5 arterial blood vessels converging on the anterior inferior quadrant of the nasal septum just above the vestibule. It is formed by arteries which are branches of both the internal and external carotid artery systems. This rhinoscopy image shows Kisselbach's plexus. The Kisselbach's plexus is located over a region of the nasal septum known as the Littles area. It is also called Kisselbach's triangle or Kisselbach's area. Many of the arteries supplying the septum have anastomotic connections here. This is a clinical image which demonstrates the location of the Littles area in the nose. Littles area and Kisselbach's plexus are named after James Little and Willem Kisselbach respectively. The image here shows Willem Kisselbach. So what are the blood vessels which take part in forming this anastomosis over the nasal septum? They are the anterior ethmoidal artery, the spinopalatine artery, the greater palatine artery, and the septal branches of the superior labial artery. This is a schematic diagram which shows the various arteries taking part in the formation of the Kisselbach's plexus and its location in relation to different bony landmarks in the head and neck area. The common carotid artery gives rise to its two terminal branches, namely the external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery. The internal carotid artery in turn gives rise to the ophthalmic artery, which ends up giving the anterior ethmoidal artery. The external carotid artery goes on to give the maxillary artery and the facial artery. The maxillary artery gives rise to the spinopalatine artery and the descending palatine artery. The descending palatine artery ultimately gives the greater palatine artery. The facial artery gives rise to the superior labial artery, the septal branches of which take part in formation of the Kisselbach's plexus. So what is the clinical significance? It is that it is a common site of epistaxis in both children and adults, particularly so in anterior epistaxis. Approximately 90% of epistaxis occur from this region. The vessels are often clearly visible in children with recurrent epistaxis. Bleeding typically occurs when the mucosa is eroded and the vessels become exposed and subsequently break. These bleeds provide a constant ooze rather than a profuse pumping of blood. Why is Little's area so vulnerable? It lies at the entrance to the nasal cavity, thus subject to extremes of heat and cold and of high and low moisture. It is easily traumatized, particularly by nose picking and wiping. The mucosa over the septum in this area is especially thin. The blood vessels anastomosing here are large and thin walls. Thank you.